Hi, I'm Chelsea Handler, and this is my Facebook page, so it should be me. We're going to do a live book signing today for all the people who have bought books and want them signed. I'm going to sign them for you. Uh, PremierCollectibles.com backslash Chelsea Handler, or slash Chelsea Handler, right, Brandon? Yeah, forward slash. Forward slash. This is Brandon, my um, lover slash assistant. He's gay, so... He's just really my assistant, but sometimes he feels like a lover, doesn't he? I do. Okay, so do I just start signing yeah, them? Start do you have questions them. from people? Yeah, I didn't get into those. Okay, it so I'm uh, going to sign the books while you ask the questions? Yeah, Fun. multitasking. Yeah, killing right. two birds with one stone. So the first comes from Desiree in Pennsylvania. Hi, Desiree this in is, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is a commonly asked question. They, everyone really wants to know what's next for you. Either if you'll return back to TV or what your current projects look like. My current projects, yeah, I'll come back to TV in some way at some point. Um, I don't know. I have a documentary coming out on, from, on Netflix in September, and that's going to be on white privilege. And, uh, and then as far as a regular TV gig, uh, I'll do something. I just have tr trying to figure out what that is and, you know, I want to do less better, so I want to focus on one thing at a time. And so this is book time, and I won't be disappearing. I'm not going to, like, I'll be on TV. I'm addicted to myself. Brandon, what's right, the well, next question? Well, let's get into the Thank next you, one. Thank you, Desiree, for asking your question. Diane from San Francisco. Hi, Diane. Uh, this is a good one. She wants to know what the key factor is in choosing a therapist that you'll you mesh with well. That's a good question. I just meshed with him because I, I, God, I don't know what the key, I think it's different for every person. Like I need somebody, for me, I needed somebody that I couldn't um, um, manipulate. Like I wanted them to be smarter than I, I am and he, Dan is really much smarter than I am or will ever be. So I look for people who are smarter than me when I'm trying to learn how to be you know, a more decent person or a better person or however. So that's a good quality to look for, I would say. And somebody who doesn't obviously annoy you because <laughs> I can't really work in therapy. Um, this one is not a question. Thank you, Diane. But this is from Gregory. He just says, no question, but I'm just sending thanks to you for standing up for the NRA and speaking out against gun control. Gun violence is disgusting. The fact that we live in this country with all these guns is awful. So uh, I hope that everybody is paying attention. And now you have a reason to vote if you never voted before, if you care about children's safety. Sorry. Uh, Danielle in Long Beach. Hi, Danielle. Uh, she wants to know if you would ever do another series documentary for Netflix. Yeah, I'll do some more documentaries for sure. I like doing the documentaries. I might do some acting stuff. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking about what I want to do next. So I really want to just... Uh, but I definitely will do more documentaries, whether they'll be on Netflix, they'll be on Netflix or what, somewhere. Yeah, probably. M maybe here at the kitchen table. Uh, I would love to work from home, Brandon. You know that. All right, I'll put that on my list. Uh, Jennifer from Ithaca. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, what have you done that you are most proud of? I'm proud of this book. I'm really proud of this book. I'm proud of my documentary series. I'm proud of every, I mean, I'm the most proud. I think I'm the most proud of this book, but that's probably because it's just, it's now. It's happening right now. And. Uh, but it's the most personal thing I've ever written and it was and it feels the most authentic so it feels like the most thing the thing I'm most proud of and you kind of live in the now like you don't is this a question for me no this is you? just commentary you don't reminisce too much so this would make sense that this is yes. what you're most proud of yeah that's right uh, Ashley from Green Bay Wisconsin hi Ashley uh, she wants to know what would your theme song be to your life and the theme song Rocky no, that's a good one. Well, that's the theme song that Brandon put on my tape of Tammy when she attacked John and bit me on the nipple. So <laughs> that's my theme song for life. That's in the book. That's a, that's a chapter in the book. You can look forward to that. Uh, Jen from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Jen, we were just talking about Albuquerque. Mary McCormick and I were just talking about Albuquerque last night at our house because I once just said, made fun of Albuquerque and she, and she was filming her show In Plain Sight there. And... Uh, she had to go back and apologize to the entire town because I made fun of them, and then I had to apologize on national television as well. Would you like to apologize again now? I'm sorry, Albuquerque. You're beautiful. Uh, she wants to know what has been the best thing about writing this book. Uh, the like the catharsis. I feel like I have a huge albatross lifted off of me, like so much stuff from my childhood that is just got. I feel like light now. So that's what was the question? What was what was the best part about writing the book? That yeah, that was it. it. Yeah, that yeah, getting healthier. 
Jamie from Bradenton, Florida. Out of Hi, all, Jamie. Well, okay, this is similar to a previous question, but out of all of your achievements, what are you most proud of? Not having a child. I'm actually really proud of that because I could have fallen into that trap, but I didn't. And I wouldn't have been, that would, that's not a good use of my time, parenting. Just ask Bert and Bernice. What's uh, the side commentary? <laughs> David from San Francisco. Hi, David. Um, what can you do to get people more involved uh, and keep the current president from being reelected? Uh, well, you need to get everyone you know to make sure that you're reaching out and doing outreach to get people registered to vote. A lot of people aren't motivated or registered to vote, so you have to find an issue that connects to them. And gun control has to be like a universal issue. We're the only country where, where we're not the only country, but we might as well be living in a in Venezuela if this is how it is, if people are going to walk around with machine guns. So that is the biggest issue. Climate change is the biggest issue. They're all big issues. But I think you have to just really keep talking to people about it, really, and, and volunteer in your neighborhood. And you're like, you know, it's very easy to go and volunteer and help people get registered to vote because people will vote if they have the information. So. All right. Eric from Chula Vista. Did you not like that answer, Brendan? No, I did. I'm just keeping my commentary uh -huh. to myself oh, yeah. now. Okay. Uh, if you could only, this is a good one. If you could only pick one drug, knowing all the reactions and side effects of the ones you've done, which would you pick? For, for the rest of my life to do one yeah, drug? Yeah, only one. <sighs> Weed. Cannabis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because it helps, it helps. I'm actually, I'm not, I, didn't ha I don't have an edible in my system today, and it feels off. I feel uh, sluggish, actually. So, would you mind? Would you like me to grab you one? Yes, okay. please. Uh, after this question, Emily from uh, Indianapolis. Hi, Emily. She wants to know: Have you always loved dogs like you do now, or was it a special pet that gave you this affection? I've for always them? loved dogs. I had dogs growing up, but I mean, I'm not. A, yeah, I, I'm not like this crazy dog person, though. I'm just crazy about my dogs, so I'm kind of selfish in that way. Nothing from the peanut gallery. But I will say, you gave me a, a piece of good advice after uh, my dog passed, and you said that if you're able to, we have a responsibility to take in shelter animals, and you take that very seriously, because right after Chunk and Tammy, we got Bert and Bernice. Mm -hmm. Yes, so thank that's you. Good for well, everyone. yeah, I think we should always try to. If you, can help, if you can have a pet in your home, you should. It just makes your life better, too. Uh, Cecilia from California. Hi, Cecilia from California. She wants to know, where would you like to see yourself in five years? <clears throat> where would I like to see myself in five years? I'm so bad at these questions because I never have any sort of game plan. I just kind of see what happens. I, where, I want to see myself um, skiing a lot and writing a lot. And, uh, j you know, I mean, I think just, I don't know. I don't have a great answer for that question. But I'm gonna be producing a lot of TV shows and I, I feel like I'll probably end up doing one of those or starring one of those shows um, uh, just to do something different and kind of stretch a different kind of muscle for me, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm doing this tour and this is gonna take me through July and then, uh, but that's not five years, so <laughs> I'm gonna stop months. talking because I don't have an answer. All right, well, we're gonna do this question and I think we're gonna get a fan on the phone who got a book. So Jacqueline oh. from Miami, Florida. She says, I turned 30 Hi, this year. Uh, I turned 30 this year. What's the best advice you would give yourself at 30? Um, okay, that's good. Don't smoke cigarettes ever. They're disgusting. Get rid of diet soda if you take that, if you drink that. If you can get, cut bad habits when you're 30, you're gonna be much happier when you're 40 because that's when everything starts to start to discombobulate. <laughs> but I'm healthier than I've ever been only because I got healthy when I was like 40. So if you can get healthy, work out, make it a part of your life. Mentally fit is, is a part of about being like physically fit. They both of them work together. And I would go to a therapist if you haven't already. Just in general, everyone should go to therapy if you could afford to. All right, do we have someone on the phone? Are we calling someone? We are. Ooh, someone, someone who got one of the books. Oh, good, what's her name? We're finding that out. Oh. All right, while we wait, let's do Olivia and Carrie. Wait, what, what is this woman's, this woman's name? Olivia and Carrie, both on the phone. On the phone? No. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? She's on speaker. I'm good, I'm thrilled. Like, my evening has been effing rock. 
Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, thank you so much. Where are you? I'm in Kansas City, Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, I love Kansas City, especially in the springtime. 816. Yeah, 816, baby. 816. There you go. There you go. What How do you, are you? I'm great. I'm sitting here doing my live signing in my in my house in LA. And then okay. and that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. What do you Happy early birthday. Thank you. I'm going to be 47. And my daughter's 25. And so we are like female friends now. And so she knew. She's like, I got to get that book from my mom. Oh, that's cute. That is cute. We're almost the same age. I'm 44. Oh, you love 34. Well, I feel like I'm 90. So thank you. I know. That's, that's, what, that's what these last couple of years have done. <laughs> Yeah, totally, totally. You have, yeah, exactly. So have I. You have to have money as you age to to lessen the blow. You know, it helps soften the blow. Yeah, yeah, it's important. I want to tell you what you've done for me. Is my candle back? Yeah. Okay. First of all, I have always loved this scent, and you started dating him. And Curtis Jackson, I used to say, scent is my baby daddy. And then, so I want to know how wonderful it was. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice to hear. Well, it was it was it was hard. I, I went through stuff. It was just like I mean, that's all you on, on Bill Maher. I mean, it's like it's hard to get out of your head and just yeah, seriously. I know. I think we all had a lot of us had a crisis, crises. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, thank you for the reception of the book. It's been so nice and like it feels really great to hear everybody's stories and to hear, Good. yeah, that we're all kind of in Good. the same boat. We are. We are. Okay, well, okay. well, it was. No, I want to tell you one more thing though. I'm a therapist, I'm a mental health therapist. So I'm thrilled that you're also advocating. Oh, wow, you are a mental health therapist. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, we're advocating mental health. Who knew? Definitely. All right. All right. It was nice to meet you. Okay, nice to meet you. Thank Love you. Bye-bye. Stop kicking me under oh, the sorry. table. What is that about? Well, my legs Thank crossed. You. All right. Well, so you want to remind people where they can get the book? Well, uh, yeah, at premiercollectibles.com uh, slash Chelsea. Because they can still get them now through the signing. Through the signing. The um, sign How much more time do we have on the signing, Brandon? You have to get through the... About 15 minutes. Get okay. through the questions because we don't want to miss any. All right, this is a good one. Someone says that uh, Courtney from Ohio says, I've currently lost my oomph and think it coincides with the current world condition. How can I get out of my slump? you got to get look inside yourself and you've got to... First of all, you've got to get up and you can't lose your oomph. You can't. You can get it, get, like get off your track, but you have to get back on the track. So you are in charge of your own happiness. You have to go out and get it. So figure out a way to find things that are going to fill you up instead of take away from you, which is watching the news, which is reading the news all day long. You could be informed, but don't let it control or define your day. I think maybe I should do some self-help. Well, I think you are helping everyone now. This feels like I feel like Dr. Phil all of a sudden. Dr. Ruth, maybe. Christina Conroe from Texas. She wants to know, how do you feel, this is a good one, for anyone who hasn't read the book, how do you feel about forgiveness? I know you have cut people out of your life based on something they have done to break your trust in the past. Does anyone deserve a second chance? Yes, people do deserve second chances. I unfortunately gave people who didn't deserve second chances multiple chances, and the people who probably deserve second chances, I didn't. Did that make sense? Yeah. Great. 
So uh, you just have to, I have to work on forgiveness. I have, I held grudges and I would be, I was angry. But I, all my anger when I found out what it was all tied up in, I was able to not be so angry and I'm not as angry anymore. So I feel so much more uh, at, grounded and, and, and at peace. So it's just, it's worth it. It's like, yeah. Okay. I th Anything think else? that answered the question, did it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Erica from Beth Page, New York. She wants to know if you had five minutes alone in the room with Trump, what would you say? Nothing. Or do? I don't want to be alone with him in, in a room. <laughs> That's okay. That's probably a safe bet. It's like a rhinoceros heading for your vagina. No, thank you. <laughs> um, Carrie from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hi, Carrie. She wants to know uh, do the same thing, this is good, do the same things make you laugh 20 years ago that still make you laugh today? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. Probably not. But I mean, stupidity in general makes me laugh. People falling always makes me laugh. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. That's a good question. What was I doing 20 years ago when I was 24? Yeah, I was probably just a lot, I was more immature, that's it. So obviously more things made me laugh, like farts and stuff. I don't think farts are funny anymore. Um, Claudia from Corona, California wants to know, does anything Claudia. surprise you? Hi, Claudia. Does anything surprise yeah, like me? Yeah, like what surprises you the most? Um, let me think. What surprises me? People, like... I guess I'm surprised when people stop, when you feel like the world is a mess and in a complete disarray and then you go, you know, drive down the street and everyone stops at a four-way stop sign and I'm like reminded of civilization and that things are still going along in some sort of orderly fashion. I think that surprises me because you think everything is falling apart. Sometimes it feels like that for me anyway. So, so you know, that surprises me and, and like... Uh, it's like the humanity in people still. Yeah, that surprises me. And it's a nice reminder. It's a reminder to just, yeah, for all of us. Uh, Derek Gaston from Springfield, Missouri wants to know. Hi, Derek. Okay, have, who is the most memorable guest you've ever had? I'd like to know this because I don't think you've ever said if you have one. Or do you have, do you have a best interview? I don't, I don't know. Uh, let me think. Who's a good interview? Will Ferrell's one of my favorites. He's, he's always the funniest. And Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's a really funny interview. He thinks my dogs are racist every time he came on my show. And I guess they were because they were barking at him. Uh, I'm going to butcher this name, but hopefully it's Anacelli from Daly City, California. Anacelli? Anacelli. Where have you not yet visited that you would like to go? Oh, great. Uh, like Southeast Asia, probably. Like, I haven't been to Thailand. I haven't been to Vietnam. It's a very moist climate there, so I'm kind of trying to, like, I don't know if I can handle it because I'm very hot all the time and it's very humid there. So I would like to go there, but I haven't been to Prague yet and I haven't been to uh, all the European ski resorts. So I got to hit those next year, but I love traveling. It's my favorite thing in the world is to be away. And Brandon loves when I travel. I do. Uh, Eric from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This, so in the book, you talk about things you didn't like about doing the late night talk show, but is there anything that you miss about it? No. <laughs> not, the, not one thing. No. I don't miss things. I told you. I mean, that I miss. I, I don't have that mi missing. I don't. Well, that answers your question, Eric, from Fort Lauderdale. So if you're, yes. Yeah, sorry. Kate from Southfield, Michigan. I want to try and be, pretend I do miss it. People seem to want me to miss it, so. Well, another question up here was <laughs> if you'd ever revive Chelsea lately and do like a 2.0 no, version. No, 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 I please. already knew the answer to that, so. Kate from Springfield, Michigan wants to know your funniest high moment that you can remember. Oh, God, every moment. Uh, we did mushrooms out over here once, and we were laughing so hard, and we... Well, and we we named, I pretended I had this fake invisible friend that I was talking to with all my friends and we called her Kimmy, but we spelled it C-Y-M, backwards three, E-I-G-H. And we, it took us a long time to find uh. a backwards three on the number. But then we changed our text thread to Kimmy. And uh, every time I see that written, it makes me laugh. Madeline from Garland, Texas. Wants Hi, Madeline. To, she wants to know your favorite midnight munchie snack. Oh, I like to snack. I don't put any food in here. Brandon can no, verify no, this. I can attest to that. There's no good stuff in my house. There's like protein chocolate bars. At the, at, that's the worst thing because I'm a pig and I can't control myself. And if I see pizza, I'll eat it. 
So it's, I'm not allowed to have it at the house. And luckily I'm a big girl and it's my house, so I call the shots. Except Brandon tries to call the shots too because he thinks he wants to control my brain. No, I do not. But I will say that her favorite midnight munchie snack is a crunchy shredded beef taco from Benito's on Santa Monica. That's correct. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Nicholas, this is, okay, Nicholas from Texas. He wants to know what are you most excited to write about in the future? I like this. Uh, oh yeah, that's good. Uh, I don't know, like, ever, okay, so I wrote this book and then I kind of really got in. I think the therapy opened up a lot of like doors for me in terms of emotional, like seeing the world in a different way and giving me a fresh perspective and being more grounded and present. And I'm really interested in all of that stuff now, all the stuff that I used to be like, shut up about mindfulness and meditation. I'm kind of into that. So I, I'm i definitely gonna like lean into that. I'll probably write another funny book, I would imagine, so that we can, you know, that it's not like this every time. Um, but I don't know. But this book is funny too. So anyone who hasn't gotten the book yet, who's going to be reading it, it's still really funny. Like even the chapters that you think are gonna be sad because while you were editing it and I was reading them, you still found yourself laughing at the stuff that seems depressing. Yeah. So that's a good mix in the book. Yeah, I mean, I tried to put funny in there because I wanted my fans to get what they were, you know, coming for. And, but uh, I wanna write more for sure. I definitely wanna write more. I feel like I'm getting good at writing now. Uh, we're gonna switch it up and we are going to do like a speed round of questions. So just the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Who would can you, you like- put your hands where I can see them, please? Yes, okay, is this better? Who, who would you like to have dinner with, past or present? I, I mean, um, this is a question that annoys me. Okay, well I don't, that's your answer. I don't know, sorry. Which one, Game of Thrones or Stranger Things? Game of Thrones. What is your favorite breakfast food? Egg whites, well, egg whites, yeah, and like, you know, veggies it's boring it's not my favorite i just have to eat that so that i don't turn into a <laughs> what is your favorite genre of music uh like uh genre of music yeah. what is it wouldn't it be like rock no. no what i mean your favorite people neil young what is he that's rock, rock but that's not like he's not my favorite musician I like all that old shit. I like Fleetwood Mac, I like Steely Dan, I like that. But I do like like George Ezra, I like the Lumineers. So I don't know what genre it is. I don't have a good musical taste, by the way. So any of those artists I mention, um, you can take that as a compliment. <laughs> uh, who's your idol growing up? My idol? Yeah. Bill Cosby, so there you go. <laughs> Well, that took a turn. Yeah, it did. It took a turn for all of us, Brandon. What is your favorite international cuisine? International cuisine? I love Chinese food. Um, is that? Yeah, I really do. I love it. I want it all the time. Oh, and, I, and dim sum. Yeah. What is your favorite candy bar? Twix. Do you have a favorite season? Of the year? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, yeah. A favorite four seasons? Yes, which city is your favorite Four Seasons located in? Do I have a favorite season? Season. Yeah. I like fall. You, really? No. I would have said winter because you get to ski. Yeah. Winter if I don't live on the East Coast. Okay, your favorite childhood memory? Martha's Vineyard and she liked being in the water in front of our house in Martha's Vineyard with all my brothers and sisters. Did you ever have an imaginary friend? Sounds well, like you still I, do. Kimmy <laughs> is my imaginary friend, kimchi. Uh, spelled with a backwards three, and she, uh, I didn't have an imaginary, oh yeah, I think I did have an imaginary friend when I was a little girl. I had lots of friends all the time, so I didn't have to make up like imaginary friends, and I think that I remember someone, in, someone getting really, really berated at school for having, an, or not berated, but like made fun of for having an imaginary friend, so I think that's also the reason why I was scared to develop. An to announce your until adulthood, <laughs> uh, that you've had Kimmy with you all these years. Do you have a favorite animal? Uh, dogs. What is your go-to workout? Well, Ben Bruno, just because I don't have a better trainer. What do you never leave home without? Brandon, that's a good question for you. I have a list. I'll post it online later. Oh uh, well, no, Vaseline. My my lip balm is yep. the most important thing to me. <laughs> Do you have a favorite superhero? Yeah, my the one I'm gonna play in Mar in the Marvel show on uh, we're uh, Tigra. 
I'm gonna be the voice of Tigra. That's my new favorite superhero, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your favorite time of day? Oh, happy hour. Have you ever ridden in a hot air balloon? Yes, I have ridden in a hot air balloon. What is your favorite board game to play? I don't like that. What is your favorite pizza topping? Pizza topping? Mm -hmm. Pepperoni, I guess, or mushroom? Mushroom. Do you have a favorite teacher? Mrs. Sheckman from third grade. Do you like movie theater popcorn with or without butter? Uh, I guess without. Who is your favorite author? Oh, favorite author? Oh God, there's so many great authors. I don't have a favorite. Okay, one of my favorite authors is um, Edith Wharton. She, House of Mirth is one of my favorite books. Who has impacted you the most? You, Brandon. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. You, Bert. Who's impacted me the most? My psychiatrist, Dan, probably. Yeah, he's had a bit of influence on you lately. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Um, all right, well, we're almost out of time, so you're gonna finish. I like this. This is fun, books. though. I like doing this live signing. Well, why don't you remind everyone where they can get the book since uh, you're wrapping up? Why don't you remind everybody where right. they can get the book? Anyone yeah. who hasn't gotten the book yet can go to premiercollectibles.com forward slash Chelsea Handler for a signed copy of Life Will Be the Death of Me. Thank you guys for tuning in to my live signing. I hope everybody has a great weekend. And if you want to go out and get shit-faced, go for it.